As you've never traveled by flu powder before, you need to know a few things. When you're in the fireplace, say where you're going and keep your elbows tucked in. Mind you get out at the right fireplace. Are you sure this is safe? Piece of cake! Diagon <coughs> Alley! Harry had no idea where he was. All he could tell was that he wasn't in Diagon Alley. Evil-looking masks stared down from the wall, and rusty, spiked instruments hung from the ceiling. The sooner I get out of here, the better. Harry heard a noise from the door nearby, and two blurry shapes appeared on the other side of the glass. Harry looked quickly around and spotted a large black cabinet. He shot inside it and pulled the doors closed, leaving a small crack to peer through. Seconds later, a bell clanged. And Draco Malfoy stepped into the shop. The man who was with Draco could only be his father, Lucius Malfoy. Touch nothing, Draco. Mr. Malfoy was trying to sell the shopkeeper certain dark magical items that he didn't want the Ministry of Magic to find out about. Harry went to Flourish and Blots to buy his books. While he was in there, Gilderoy Lockhart, Hogwarts' new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, was signing his latest book. Nice big smile, Harry. Together you and I were the front page. Harry met up with Ron and Ginny Weasley. Lucius and Draco Malfoy were also there. Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Ginny, who was very fond of Harry, defended him. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Lucius Malfoy insulted the scruffy state of the second-hand books Ginny had bought. I suppose those books are the best your father can give you. Lucius plucked a copy of A Beginner's Guide to Transformation from Ginny's Cauldron, examined it briefly, and then replaced it. No one at that time realized how much of an effect this gesture from Lucius Malfoy would have on their lives, and they all left the shop, none the wiser. They found the car in Charing Cross Road, and after making it invisible, flew it into the sky over London. They saw the Hogwarts Express far below and followed it for some time. Looks like we've lost the train. Let's check out that tunnel. <laughs> Looks like we found the train, Ron. To scratch the paintwork or my dad will kill me. Pick up the speed boost to stay ahead of the train and watch out for any obstacles.
really close. I didn't think we'd make it out of the tunnel. Excellent, Harry. <laughs> There's Hogwarts. Try and land the car in the castle grounds. There's something wrong with the car. I don't have control anymore. By the time Harry and Ron had escaped from the Whomping Willow, the sorting ceremony had already begun. They peered in at the Great Hall and watched as the aged, old sorting hat 
placed new students into the four Hogwarts houses as it had for so many years past. Harry remembered putting the sorting hat on a year ago, and for a few horrible seconds he had feared the hat was going to put him into Slytherin along with Draco Malfoy. Not Slytherin, eh? Well, if you're sure, better be Gryffindor! But of course, he had ended up in Gryffindor, along with Ron and Hermione. As they watched the sorting, Harry noticed that at least one teacher was missing from the staff table. Hang on, where's Snape? And then, from behind him, came the voice Harry dreaded to hear. It was Professor Snape, Harry's least favorite teacher. I'm waiting to hear why you two didn't arrive on the school train. It was a great start to the term, thought Harry, as they followed Snape to his office. Once there, Snape nastily admonished them about flying the car to Hogwarts. You will go immediately to your common room, and I will think about how to punish you.